Hey, welcome to Man Kitchen Recipes. I am Kevin, and uh, just a little backstory of what I'm doing today. Up until a couple of years ago, when my brother-in-law passed of uh, COVID, four of us used to get together once a month, go to each other's house. Each house would cook dinner. We would play darts till you know whatever. Start at five and end at anywhere from ten to midnight. Anyway, so uh, about three months ago. We started again with a nephew, uh, my other brother-in-law, and a friend now, and uh, it's my turn. <laughs> so what I'm doing today is I've got three racks of pork, uh, baby back rib, do some of my green chili mac and cheese, and I'm going to try a new cheese dip. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. It's just a cheese dip for an appetizer before we throw darts and before we eat. And uh, let me just show you my little dart room. Okay, so here's my little one-car garage that uh, the previous owners put this wall in so that we could have a laundry room and uh, I've converted it into our dart room that was a window it goes out to my carport got a man kitchen recipes dartboard some signs you have big mouth Billy Bass dartboard oh yeah I gotta have my gotta have my clock right of course it's still running it should be set on five o'clock Beer light. Uh, I've got this wall here. Those are some old dart boards that I had, and the old fence from out back. I uh, took the panels off and put them on my wall. And then, of course, there's my fridge with my stickers from other channels. Yes, that's a beer fridge, and let's see, probably has beer in it. Yeah, pretty fully stocked with beer. Yeah, so there you go. The taps are not currently used. I used to make my own beer and haven't in quite a while. So anyway, yeah, this is my little man cave. Got a little heater, games, TV. Uh, yeah, that's it. So it's not much. It's a tiny one car garage. I like it. I love this place. Let's get these ribs ready. I've got my Lone Star Grills pellet grill started up already. I'm going to be smoking it. Uh, 250. Yeah, I think I turned it down to 240 because I'm doing ribs, uh, beef, and pork. Uh, sometimes, usually, I do my pork at 225, but I'm going to do them all together, and then we'll add the the mac and cheese and the cheese dip. Everything's going to fit inside of that pellet grill, and that's one thing, one reason why I bought that. I used to do a lot of big, big cooks, but you know, things change. Things change. Things happen, and I don't get to use it as often as I did, but I'm using it today. <laughs> So let's get these uh, ribs ready. All right, so here's my ribs, the beef, the three baby backs. And you know, if you're not familiar with how to uh, take this membrane off of baby backs, I always like to go on top of a bone, get a butter knife, go underneath so you can push on that bone right there. Start pulling it up a little bit. Get your finger in there. And most of the time with baby backs, this just comes right off. If I get all the way through there, and you just peel it off. It's just that simple. See, all gone. It's got a little bit here because of the uh, As far as the beef ribs, man, you know, sometimes I take the membrane off. Most of the time I leave it on. And if you leave it on, you know, you can just score it like this. It's not a big deal. I personally don't like the chew of it and sometimes I'll peel it off and people freak out thinking my ribs are gonna fall apart so far they haven't but today we're not gonna chance it all right we're just gonna score it and call that good okay it's kind of funny the third the third baby back the membranes is already gone but you know I mean it's kind of messy it's got this whole slab of meat right here here's is the last bone from here over that's just an extra slab of meat uh, it's got this little thing here, and on this end, it needs to be cleaned up. I don't know why they took the membrane off and didn't clean up the rest of it. But I will get these cleaned up. Same with this one. It's got that little flap there. I'll probably square off the ends. Don't worry, I do use uh, this meat. I may not smoke it today. I might save it for another cook. Okay, I got these all trimmed up to my liking. I got this pile of meat over here that I cut off. All right, so anyway, what I'm going to do today is for my beef ribs I'm gonna use uh, meat church holy cow and then for my pork ribs 
today I'm gonna to use, I'm going the meat church route. So all three of these ribs are gonna be uh, the Texas sugar. Um, I mean, I could do each one different, but you know what? I don't want to. <laughs> They're all gonna be the same. Uh, and then towards the end, uh, when I put sauce on these pork ribs, it's gonna be Uncle Steve's, the sauce with no name. This barbecue sauce is amazing. And if you watch my channel lately, <laughs> I've been on a red chili sauce binder kick. This is just a mild red chili sauce. And all I'm gonna do is put a little bit on each one. This is the bottom. And yes, I'm gonna put it on my beef rib as well. So I have one clean hand and one gloved hand. And I'm just gonna get this rubbed in. Okay, you might think I'm crazy using red chili sauce. It just adds this extra layer of flavor. It's not hot. It's more savory, it's outstanding on beef. It's gonna be good on this pork. And uh, you know, you don't have to use any binder at all if you don't want to. So we're gonna get the holy cow on the pork, on the beef. And the meat church, Texas sugar on the pork. I'll flip these over, do the exact same thing. I'll be back. All right, here we go, we got our beef, we got our pork. 245 degrees on this. Uh, why 245? I don't know. That's what I felt like going with. <laughs> so let's get the beef on there. Pork. Okay, so I went with the beef and the pork on the bottom shelf because I'm doing the mac and cheese and the cheese dip up on the top shelf. Those will go on and probably a couple hours. So we're gonna let these roll for probably about three hours and then we'll uh, wrap them, sauce them, do all that to it. So I'll be back. Okay, so for my cheese dip, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put in two blocks of uh, cream cheese. I'm just gonna put them in like that. Okay, uh, you can use equal amounts or I'm using a 14.75 can of sweet cream corn. You can use regular corn. I thought some cream corn would be nice. Make the dip a little uh, saucier. Uh, we've got uh, hatch green chilies here. We can get them in all kinds of different packaging. Uh, they come in little freezer bags. I'm going to put a whole bag of green chili in there. Why? Because we like green chili. All right. Also going to put about, got some cream, uh, sour cream. I think there's about maybe half a cup left in here. So we're going to just squeeze this all in there. I believe it's about a half a cup. If not, well, it is what it is. <laughs> and then I have one pound of uh, freshly grated uh, pepper jack cheese. Oops, some of this green chili is still a little bit frozen. Move that around a little bit. All right, one pound of pepper jack cheese, okay? And that's just gonna go in the smoker like that after about, you know, 30 minutes, hour, we'll go out and give it a stir. All right, that's one. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is some, uh, most of you have seen me do this. This is a green chili uh, mac and cheese, super simple. Just get a pound of Elbow macaroni. Here's a, another way we get it. This is the extra roasted green chili from Santa Fe Olay. This is medium. The last was hot. Yeah, it's all going in there. I'm gonna put a stick of butter. I've already got it diced up. Doesn't matter how you put it in, just get it in there because normally I'll use five cups of milk, one cup of heavy cream. Don't have any heavy cream. So I'm going in with six cups of just regular vitamin D milk, whole milk. And in this pan, it just fits. That was five, and here's one more. Okay. And of course, mac and cheese need the cheese, right? So I got a pound of freshly grated Monterey Jack. I love Monterey Jack. You can use whatever you want. Monterey Jack is a nice melty cheese. 
It melts really nice when you freshly grate it, not quite as well when you buy it in the bag, but it will melt. So, all right, that is it. I'm gonna get these out on the smoker. It's time for those ribs to come off. We'll get those wrapped up back on and all of this should be ready right around the same time. Check out these ribs. Oh yeah, I did spritz them one time at about an hour and a half in. All right, so let's get these off of here. Look at that. Beef ribs. Okay, in goes the uh, mac and cheese. Uh, cheese dip I'm testing out and they both should take right around two hours so we'll check back or I'll check back on these in an hour mix them up I'm gonna get these uh, ribs wrapped and back okay. in. first thing we're gonna rub the rub I'm gonna wrap the beef ribs first because they're nothing real special and spray it a little bit and then I'm gonna put another little sprinkling of the uh, holy cow rub on here All right, that's it. Okay, I'm only double wrapping it because a lot of times the bones will pop through. Hopefully we will uh, not have that problem. If you're not familiar with the uh, wrapping pork ribs, usually uh, we'll put a little parquet Butter, you could use regular butter, just a little bit on the underside. Regular butter, some brown sugar, and some honey. Okay. Flip it over and do the same thing. Wrap it up. All right, we'll get the other two done. We'll get them back right. on the air. Now, pretty sure I've showed you all this before, but one thing I like to do is before I put the foil wrapped ribs back on here is just give it a quick little rub down. All right, the reason why I like to do that is so when you set your foil ribs back on here that whatever's on your grate doesn't stick to your foil, which will or could tear your foil when you go to get these off. We're gonna let these go for probably about an hour and a half wrapped. One hour in for the cheese. All right, look at that. I don't wanna tilt it too much. Let's move you in here. This is the cheese dip. The cream cheese and the pepper jack cheese and the corn. Sour cream. It's coming along nice. The ribs got about another 30. It's time to get these ribs out. All right, look at that beef rib. I think I'm just gonna leave these in these little foil boats. We'll get some Uncle Steve's, the sauce with no name on these. All right, just took the ribs out. Let's check out this uh, cheese sauce. Looks like the mac and cheese still uh, it's thickening up. It's going to need a little more time, which is totally okay. We are early for dinner right now. Nobody's shown up yet. All right. Oh. All right. This cheese dip. Hmm. Yeah. Look at that. That is ready. Take this off. Have to cover it and keep it in the oven to keep it fluid, but 
it's okay. We're gonna let the uh, mac and cheese keep going and uh, we'll give this a taste. All right, it's been a long day. Got my uh, beef ribs right there, my pork ribs right there, and that's the cheese dip right there. I got a little bit here. Uh, you know, everybody's not here yet. They'll be here soon. I do want to try this cheese dip though. Green chili, corn, pepper jack cheese, cream cheese, and a little bit of sour cream. Mmm. 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 That's pretty darn good. Cut a little piece of the uh, beef rib off. Nice color. Mmm. Man. Belt in your mouth. So good. Mmm. Mmm. Right. Cut the end off of a pork rib. Doesn't show much of a smoke ring on this one, but doesn't really matter. Mmm. That Uncle Steve sauce with no name is just fantastic barbecue sauce. Mmm. 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 This is how I like my pork ribs. Bite off the bone. Not like hard to bite it off, but it's not like falling apart off the bone like if I would have done the 3 2 one uh, So this is for our dark night, <clears throat> and uh, this is at the end of 2023. You will see this probably on New Year's Day or thereafter. I hope you all have a happy New Year.